Rocket League mechanics are the best part of playing this game. They're useful, they look awesome, and the possibilities they open up feel limitless. In this video, I'm going to give you the best tips and tricks that I've learned for each mechanic so that you can master them quickly. These won't be tutorials since there are so many of those out there already, but rather little details and things that are easy to miss or mess up that I wish I knew sooner. If you're interested in full tutorials, let me know in the comments and let's begin with everyone's favorite, the flip reset. Flip resets are the coolest mechanic in Rocket League and if you think differently, well, then you're wrong. Flip resets are so useful and so cool, so here we go straight into tip number one. Most beginner flip resets will look something like this. The main issue with beginner flip resets is that you get them far too late. Everything's falling down and by the time you have the reset and can use it, you're way too close to the ground and you're just gonna get blocked. Good players know that the key to a good reset is getting it really early, either when the ball's on the way up or right when it reaches its peak. The earlier on and the higher up you give yourself your flip, the more time you're gonna have to adjust and actually take a shot. Focusing on getting the reset early will help you tremendously, but it's not the only tip for flip resets. I'm always surprised to find out that people don't know this tip, but number two is that holding the brake when you get your reset keeps your car a lot closer to the ball. It's not impossible to get a flip reset without holding the brake, but if you're struggling to get the shot after resetting your flip, or you want to go for some more mechanical stuff after, definitely hold the brake. On the topic of buttons you should be holding, let's talk about holding air roll when you hit the ball. If you start holding air roll when you hit the ball, you will hit it harder. I know, I know, Goose Monkey 10, this one's been debunked already, but hear me out. Do you ever feel like the ball hits your car harder than you've hit it? Well, holding air roll is probably your best fix. It helps reduce whiplash when you actually make contact with the ball, and you'll be able to follow it up a lot better. Another super useful mechanic that this influences a lot is double taps. That brings me to tip number four, which is that the biggest issue I see with people learning double taps is that they get way too close to the backboard. When you get too close to the backboard, you have a smaller target to shoot on, the angle is much more difficult, and you're just going to hit it off crossbar. Compare that to a shot where you give the ball a lot of time and space to come off backboard, you'll notice that the angle is much easier and the shots are a lot more consistent. This couples really nicely with the previous tip because you want to hit the ball hard at the backboard. It lets the ball bounce off further and let you get that distance, plus if there's a defender, you'll easily hit it around them. Double Tap Playground is by far the best training pack to work on this, and I highly recommend it. Now before talking about some of the more advanced mechanics, I want to talk about flicks. Flicks are probably the most useful scoring tool in this game, and there's really only one major tip I have to help you improve on them. The key to a good flick is in a good dribble. You want to match the speed of the ball so it's not bouncing on your car. What you really want to look out for is whether or not there's sparks while you're dribbling the ball, because that means that the ball is bouncing and you're going to have a much harder time with the initial pop before the flick. Dribble 2 Overhaul is an excellent workshop map to train specifically this if you're on PC. However, if you want something else or you're on console, I have another training pack called Catch Into Flick specifically to work on this. You can use this training pack to work on how fast you're able to catch the ball in a smooth dribble and transition that into a flick. Alright, now that we've talked about something easy, let's talk about air dribbling. Air dribbling is pretty legit. It's not an easy mechanic, but it's so useful when you do get it down right. The big problem with beginner air dribbles is that a lot of beginners are pushing the ball forward but not up. When you start pushing the ball up, you're influencing the path in a way that's not natural and it's a lot easier to get it around defenders. Unfortunately, the best way to train this is on a workshop map that's only accessible to PC players. It's called Muzgard's Air Dribble Gauntlet, and while completing the map is something that only a handful of people in the world can do, it has some really useful features to help you train. The ball guide feature gives a red circle on the best spot to touch it for an air dribble, and anything outside of that red circle is where you're going to start to drop the ball. I highly recommend this map just for this ball guide feature alone, and if there's anyone out there who knows how to make Bakke's mod plugins, please find a way to just add this to free play. Staying on the topic of air dribbles, there's a mistake that a lot of beginner and intermediate players make when they're learning how to air dribble. That mistake is holding air roll through the duration of the air dribble. This is again something that can completely work for you, but for people who are learning, 
air rolling through the duration of the air dribble really takes your nose outside of that red circle and you're a lot more likely to drop the ball. You're best off holding air roll right at the beginning, but once your car is pointed where you want it to go, let go of the button and you'll have a much easier time air dribbling. Hi, if you made it to this point in the video and you're enjoying it, subscribe. We're getting super close to 3 billion subscribers, so it's unlikely you'll see my videos again if you don't subscribe. Let's go back to another easy one fast aerials. If you don't learn how to fast aerial properly, you'll hit a wall and be unable to rank up. The only thing you really need to pay attention to is holding the boost button through the entire aerial and practicing after that. I also have a training pack for this called Fast Aerials by Goose where the purpose is just to hit the ball, and yes, all of them are possible. And in case being fast in the air wasn't enough for you, let's talk about speed flipping next. I'm not going to give you a whole tutorial on how to speed flip, but one thing that a lot of players miss is that when you go into training to work on speed flips, you need to give your car a minute to settle on the ground. If you just hold the gas in between attempts, you're going to lose that time that your car takes to fall to the ground and you're going to start missing the ball without good feedback whether you're doing it right. Just make sure to take a short pause between attempts. The next two tips are going to be focused on pinches, starting with cuxer pinches. I'm not great at doing cuxer pinches myself, but I do know a couple of things that have greatly improved my results on going for them. For a cuxer pinch, you want to remember to hold the air roll button as you're pinching it, and the other tip is to have your belly facing the goal you're shooting towards. If anyone has any additional tips about how to get better with cucks or pinches, I'd love to read about it in the comments. The other kind of pinch that there's a trick for is a team pinch. Team pinches have the potential to go so fast that they're unsavable, but like every other mechanic, people tend to mess it up a lot. In order to get the most consistent results, you want one teammate to be flipping and the other teammate to do a single jump. It takes a lot of early communication, but when you get it right, it's so worth it. Even in this clip, you can see that the pinch worked out so well because the flips came out after the ball was already gone. Alright, the next two tips are going to be for you aspiring freestylers. Beginning with stalling, all I can really do is tell you the controls you need to hit to perform a stall. The rest is up to your own creativity. To perform a stall, it's required that you either use air roll left or air roll right. The stall itself is three button inputs at the same time, and then you have to let go of all your controls. When you're ready to stall, you press your direct directional air roll, you press your control stick in the opposite direction of your directional air roll, and you press the jump button. For me, the secret really was to let go of everything after I performed the stall. If that was confusing, that's okay. The next freestyle trick is a lot easier to learn. And that is, of course, a pogo. Not much to say about this one. I just know that the most common mistake is that people tend to go straight up and down and then get confused why their car isn't bouncing. In practice, you actually want to lean back so that the roof of your car is closer to the ground and turn slightly to the side so you're bouncing off the corner like this. And with that, we've come to the final mechanic of this video, the musty flick. Remember that red circle from the air dribbling portion? Well, that's gonna apply here as well. Most beginners try to go for musty flicks from too high up and too far away from the ball. The key is to touch the spoiler of your car right in that red circle and flip straight backwards. Remember, when you flip in this game, you essentially stop gravity from acting on your car for a split second, so make sure to get your musties from underneath the ball with your spoiler touching. If you practice this a lot and keep picturing the right spot to hit it, you'll get crazy scoops in no time. That's it for all my tips and tricks. If you liked it, like the video, and be sure to check out the description for all the training packs and references in this video. See you in the next one.